Monkeys may be the most famous primates, but they're not the only one. Let's talk about the traits that all primates share. Primates are cute, fuzzy relatives, and there are a lot of different ones out there. Today, we're going to first talk about the difference between primitive and derived characteristics so we can better interpret primate characteristics, and then we'll talk about all of the, the characteristics that primates have. So first, primitive versus derived. In this instance, primitive means old and derived is new. When we're talking about characteristics, a primitive trait is something we inherited from a very ancient ancestor. So we share that with a lot of different living organisms. A derived trait is something new. When we're talking about primates, that means it is derived in primates and we don't find it in our closest ancestors that are not primates. So first, let's take a look at these primitive characteristics. Here we're talking about really old stuff like DNA. Every other living creature has DNA. Um, we are also multicellular, which we share with many different uh, living domains. Uh, we also have bilateral symmetry. We have two halves that are mirrored. We also have a vertebral column. We have four limbs, just like most land animals. We have differentiated teeth or different types of teeth. We have incisors, canines, premolars, and then molars all the way in the back. We also have internal pregnancy and fur, all of which we share with all other mammals. We also have pentadactyly, or we have five fingers on our hands and our feet. That the very first tetrapods all happen to have five digits, so that's why we inherited this today. We also have two lower arm bones, our radius and ulna, and that's what allows us to twist our forearm. We have a clavicle and we have a generalized body plan. We are not particularly specialized in any way um, when you compare us to, say, bats, which are specialized to flight, or dolphins and whales, which are specialized for swimming. But what's more interesting, let's talk about these derived characteristics. In this instance, these are things that are new and really we mean kind of special. What makes primates special relative to, to other groups? Don't take this at that we are more special than other groups because other groups are just as special in different ways. But when looking at primates, we have reduced olfaction. So this means we have shorter snouts fewer whiskers, and if you look at our brains, we actually have a smaller olfactory bulb to process smells in our brains. You can contrast this to a dog here. Look at how long their snout is. There's just so much more room for their nose to be there. In contrast, all of these primates, really short snouts, hardly anything there. Most primates don't even have whiskers. Well, we are one of the examples with no whiskers. Instead of focusing on our nose, we instead focus on our eyes. We have something called binocular vision, where both of our eyes are facing forward, so we have a large field of view that overlaps between both eyes. This gives us um, high acuity vision and a little bit better depth perception. We also have something called a post-orbital bar. We have a complete ring of bone around our eye. Um, we see this in all primates, and you can see there's that highlighted bar in that image there. It happens a little bit differently in different primate groups, which we will talk about when we get into those groups. Next, let's talk about our hands and feet. One of my favorite traits is we have prehensile hands and feet, or our fingers are very flexible and are, can easily grasp things. You can see in our slow loris here how they're able to carefully grasp around that branch. We also have an opposable hallux and pollux, or thumb and big toe. This means we're able to oppose our thumb against the rest of our palm. All other primates can also do that with our big toe. We're the only ones who lost that. And lastly on our hands, we have nails instead of claws. This allows us to have a more delicate grasp than anything with claws on their fingers. The next one is a little bit weird. We have something called a diagonal sequence gait. So you can see here our horse, they move the left side first, then the right side. 
but in primates, we have a different pattern. We first move with a right leg, then go to a left limb, then back to the right, and then to a left limb again. This, uh, um, this method of climbing is really good when you need to walk on a very thin rope, similar to a tightrope. So we think the very first primates may have been foraging on the ends of branches. We call this terminal branch foraging. We also see just a tendency for large brains in primates. Overall, all primates have slightly larger brains than we see for other mammals. Um, and so here you can see a little bit of a comparison. Still, our strepsorines, they do have smaller brains than everyone else, but overall, the entire group, all of us have larger brains. We do also see something called a petrosal auditory boa. There are many different bones in our crania, and here we have our petrosal bone, and that is the bone that has grown over the auditory part of our cranium. In different um, mammal groups, it's actually a different part of our cranium that forms that bulb. For whatever reason, it's the petrosal bone in primates. Some behavioral characteristics, we see something called a slow life history. You might also hear this called K-selected. So this means we see fewer young. Almost all primates only give birth to one child at a time. And we see increased parental investment. Both parents are investing in raising their young more often. And we see a longer development time. It takes primates longer to grow up. And of course, this also means we have later reproduction and a longer lifespan. This is in contrast to most other mammals, which have a different strategy. They have a lot of babies all at once, and they don't have particularly long lives. Instead, primates are choosing to dedicate more time um, to each of their children, and really we're seeing quality over quantity. So let's summarize some of our most important characteristics here. We see this post-orbital bar. We have an opposable thumb and prehensile fingers, so very flexible hands. We have a more complex and larger brain. We see nails instead of claws. Our eyes face to the forward, and we have a relatively short snout. So what's a primate, and what derived traits do primates have?